Hello, bonjour, hola, guten tag, moshi moshi, welcome to the MG Row Music Show, and I'm back. I know it's been forever, but here I am again, due to a mix of, like, uh, Covid chaos, moving back into uni, and wondering what the hell I'm going to do with the channel, whether it's going to be, like, you know, more commentary, vid more commentary videos with mates, like my last few, or more strictly review videos like this. Doesn't matter, I'm back, and I'm here to review what is easily one of my favourite albums of the year. Now... Indie Electronica has been going through a bit of a change at the moment. We're seeing a rise of a whole new scene of new artists that have become popular mainstays in particular core areas of Indie Electronica. So like heavily prevalent on the uh, main Spotify Indie Electronic playlist like Alter, popular with Mixmag, in the Boiler Room DJ sets, and have a very distinct style across the board, so it's heavily influenced by the classic house music of the 80s and 90s, got a strong new disco and French house influence, but also with aspects of synth pop and electro pop in the mix as well. So I'm of course talking about people like Peggy Goo, Park Hai Jin, Jada G, The Blessed Madonna, Yai G, Black Coffee, Purple Disco Machine and so on. But what makes this particularly notable is how these artists are starting to make an impact on the mainstream, a lot of the current major pop releases of this year have had a very new disco or French house influence, particularly the, the releases by Lady Gaga and Dua Lipa. And as a result, these artists have then started getting the new electronic artists in to remix and rework a lot of their current releases. So for instance, Lady Gaga got Purple Disco Machine and Honey Dijon to remix some of her latest releases. Dua Lipa got K Trinada, and even released a whole mixtape based around getting these, this new scene of electronic artists to remix tracks from her most recent album, Future Nostalgia. And the artist I'm reviewing today is very much from this current scene. It is, of course, Welsh electronic musician Kelly Lee Owens, here on her second album, Inner Songs. And in terms of style, this album is very similar to her debut, but... That doesn't matter, lack of change isn't important. What matters is this is what I call a mastering album, where it's basically a follow-up album where an artist hasn't changed their style, but they've got it to the best it can possibly be. And I'd say there are two distinct factors to Kelly's sound. And first I'd say is a post-dubstep electronica sort of sound. The sound of electronica that's become, of indie electronica specifically, that's become very prevalent in the last few years. So artists that don't have like no, when I say dubstep, I don't mean bro step like Skrillex. I mean a more of a UK bass sort of style. And they don't just particularly have a UK bass style, but their tracks are very influenced by the same sort of ethos of a, as a lot of late later 2000s dubstep artists like Benger and Scream have very distinctly, very distinctly electronic and you know machine made repetitive bleep bloop beats. So I'm talking about, so in terms of recent artists, that's included people like Bicep, Ross from Friends, Floating Points, and of course the major artist of that scene, John Hopkins, who Kelly Lee Owens has worked with in recent years. And Kelly has perfectly mastered this sort of sound, like, it's got a, they're very sleekly done, got a he heavily distinct, very distinctly electronic sound, and got, and the beats are very very repetitive, but in a very driving sort of tougher way, which makes these tracks stand out a lot on the album. And easily the best of these cuts is the opening track, Arpeggi, a great reworking of the Radiohead track from In Rainbows. And as he perfectly masters the art of doing these, making these tracks repetitive in a sort of way where they draw you in, they get you in a trance-like state so that you are hyper aware of the most subtle of changes, like how arpeggi goes from like the more driving electronic beat to stuff that's more abstract, almost drum and bass reminiscent in the second half. But what makes Kelly Lee Owens very different from a lot of these post-dubstep inspired artists is the fact that she has vocals on her tracks, her own vocals, and this is where the tracks become a lot more synth pop and electro pop based, but in a way that's very reminiscent of a current artist like Robin and uh, Jenny Haval, who worked on Kelly's previous album. But it's this, these tracks where I'd say that some of the real gold of the album comes from. They are pure, relaxing bliss. Kelly has perfectly mastered how to make 
down tempo and these have a very light driftiness that fully draws you in and always feel, leaves you feeling purged of your worries and her vocals perfectly complement this, they're very light, airy, ethereal and very reminiscent of one of her main influences, the Cocteau Twins. And you get this sort of idea of the two sides of the album right away. You have arpeggios, the opening track, and then one of these ethereal, down-tempo synth-pop vocal tracks on as the second track. And so you have the album switching between these two styles throughout. And having vocals and more of a synth-pop sound on some of the tracks helps really adds a greater sense of variety to the album. Like it could have easily just been a, a very repetitive set of repetitive beat tracks, but these help add a good sense of variance, which keeps you interested right throughout from start to finish. And say, so easily arpeggi, the best of the more harder driving post dubstep tracks and out of the synth pop tracks, definitely on and Jeanette, definitely the ones that have a stronger catchiness to it. And both just pure ethereal, relaxing, synthy bliss. But now to get on to what is easily my favourite track from the album and one of my favourite tracks of the year, Corner of My Sky, which is the only track on this album to feature guest vocals, but what a guest. Legend of alternative and indie music, John Cale, former member of the Velvet Underground, who doesn't really like sing on this track, but more so does spoken word delivery of a poem, like the, the lyrics being based around the Welsh landscape and Welsh culture, so describing the Welsh natural scenery and then delivering the second half of the track in the Welsh language. And I suppose I have a bit of a bias here, but I love this track because I absolutely love Welsh culture. Like earlier this year, I took a trip to Mount Snowdon and climbed it and just the grandeur of the views, the whole sense of mystique and coolness with the mist coming down right across the hills is easily captured perfectly in the lyrics on this track, but also in the sort of tone it sets, the whole ethereal, ethereal, mystical tone that is set by the really chilled, laid-back synths in the background. And also, I absolutely love Welsh indie music. It's so underrated. It was obviously prevail heavily prevalent in the late 90s with the Cool Come Rye scene, which included artists like the Stereophonics, Manic Street Preachers, Super Furry Animals, and also became heavily prevalent in the early half of this decade with popular indie acts like Marina and the Diamonds and Catfish and the Bottle Men, and also last year with the notable release from Kate Le Bon. But it's still been going brilliantly in the past few years. You've had great guitar work, guitar-based indie from Boy Azuga and Buzzard Buzzard Buzzard. But also Welsh language indie has also been a hugely underrated scene that has slowly become I've seen emerge more and more in the latter half of this decade from artists like Gweno, who's another similarly ethereal synth pop based artist like Kelly, and Adwave and Alpha, I think. It's so great just in having like an, an like a nation whose main musical export is indie and alternative. And that's one of the things that fully warms me to this track and this album. We have this year's major release from a scene that has remained quite distinct and consistent and is just especially brilliant on this piece of work. Just listen to this track. It's just pure beauty pure beauty. It leaves you in a tranquil trance and just sort of purges you of your worries by the end of it. But I just love how it's just such a great tribute to just such a great musical culture. And, and I know what you're thinking, it's got vocals compared, unlike other post-dubstep albums, it's got vocals, so what are the lyrics like? Well, as I said on Corner of My Sky, it, it's absolutely perfect on that, a beautiful description of Wales and its culture, and also a great tribute in its sheer use of the Welsh language, which also adds a sort of mystique to it, how it almost sounds like a Lord of the Rings elvish sort of dialect. <laughs> Yaki da to any Welsh viewers. <laughs> and, um... But the only other like major case where I'd say the lyrics are particularly notable is on the last track, Wake Up, where unfortunately they're not that grey. It's one of many tracks we've seen in the latter half of this decade, which are about internet, mobile phone and technology addiction, which I guess are true. And I, I admit I do get every now and then, but it, by at this point in, the, in time, it feels a bit 
force like it's a sort of yeah we know that's happening right now and it's not really adding much new to it but again that the track is still great it still has the perfectly ethereal laid-back synth pop sound that makes this album so great throughout and i guess my only other complaint would be maybe having a bit more texture to it like one of the thing i was in collaborators like having john kale on it on corner of my sky really adds a greater sense of texture and lushness to the album and Kelly has had great collaborators before, such as Jenny Havar and John Hopkins, so I'd love to see what work she could do with an album that's, that was more ensemble, bringing in a lot more other indie and alternative artists to add a lot more texture and variance right throughout. But as it is, this album does have a great sense of variance going throughout, switching between the post-dubstep and the synth-pop and then having the additional John Cale feature, adding that more human warmth to an album. In fact, that's one of the greatest things about this album. Electronic albums are so heavily synth from post dubstep bass can easily end up feeling very cold and mechanical which is something I do occasionally get from works like Ross from Friends and Floating Points. But Kelly is one of those who understands how to perfectly bring in organic elements to add a warmth to it that makes it so much more inviting and involving like how John Hopkins would have piano and classical aspects. Kelly uses the warmth of the human voice to come in and draw you in and add extra texture to what could have easily just been repetitive mechanical beats but gives it so much more life. And so there you go, easily one of my favourite albums of the year. Just, uh, I don't really have any least favourite tracks, like I guess maybe something like Flow, for just, but for maybe just how overly similar it is to some of the other tracks, but on the whole it's just such a solid album from start to finish. I'd say Arpeggi, easily the greatest of the post-dubstep tracks on it. On and Jeanette, easily the best of the synth-pop tracks on it. And as, as you've heard me say, Corner of My Sky is just an extraordinary piece of work. Even if you don't listen to the album, just listen to that and I'll be satisfied. <laughs> and easily just one of my tracks of the year. So I'm giving this album a solid 8.5 out of 10, leaning far closer to a 9 and probably will be a 9 when I get round to my greatest albums of the year at the end of this godforsaken year. God, it's been so bizarre. It's gone like it's gone by really quickly yet really slowly at the same time. Time has no meaning. But yeah, if you love this album, I'd highly recommend a lot of the other artists from the current electropop, classic house-based electronica scene. So that'll be artists like uh, Yaiji and Honey Dijon. Just check out these Spotify alter playlists and some of Kelly Leowin's own playlists, particularly the Track IDs one, which Spotify and Mixmag have been doing for a lot of the current artists. Um, I definitely recommend other synth pop acts like uh, Kelly collaborator Jenny Haval, fellow Welsh artist Gweno, and just a lot of the mainstays of alternative synth pop of alternative synth pop, so stuff like uh, Robin, Bat for Lashes, Little Dragon, and in terms of most, you know, post dubstep artists, definitely some of Kelly's influences like John Hopkins, Floating Points, Bicep, or ones I've aforementioned. And if you just want some more, you know, in general, great electronica and down tempo, I definitely recommend Roixop, particularly their debut album Melody AM, which has a very similar relaxing, ethereal, yet quite natural sound as this album and is easily one of my all-time favourite albums. It's just pure beauty and bliss on an album. And in terms of like current electronic artists, I definitely highly recommend uh, Sewer Slut, yeah I know quite a name, who has a very sort of early 2000s Adult Swim sound, one that probably the greatest drum and bass doubt release of the latter half of this decade, but is easily best listened to late at night, has the same odd nostalgic vibe that some Vaporwave releases had, have, but don't listen to it on Spotify as due to contract disputes she's getting screwed over on there. Listen to it on her YouTube channel. But yeah, if you're watching, thanks for watching. Definitely check out this album, it's so underrated, and stay tuned for more album reviews. Leave comments of what you'd like to hear my opinions on, and yes, whatever, goodbye. Woo!